Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist and I work in York. Um, over the past two or three days, I've gotten to know a lot of pe new people um, uh, who've been sharing my videos in Facebook groups. And um, through that, I've met uh, a lot of new people and um, I've really enjoyed meeting them and I'm grateful for all the uh, really kind comments I've received. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to say happy birthday to Kendra, who's a new friend um, um, that I made recently. Anyway, so one of the um, interesting uh, questions that has been raised by a few of you is the subject of having ectopic beats uh, which come on during exercise. And the reason this worries people is because it scares them about exercising further, um, it also makes them worry about whether they may develop ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and, uh, and drop down dead. Uh, and therefore, a lot of people then stop exercising for fear of that happening. And I therefore thought I would do a little video on the subject of ectopics, uh, particularly those that come on on exercise and sudden death. Okay. So the first thing to say is that it is not uncommon for people to develop ectopics. It is generally uncommon for people to get a lot of ectopics. So what do I mean by that? Well, there was a study in, um, I think it was in 19, um, oh gosh, I can't remember. But it was, uh, there was a study in uh, 2004 published in the Circulation Journal. And it was, um, by a guy called Ramachandran S. Vasan in, in uh, circulation, okay? And what they did was they looked at the Framingham uh, offspring uh, participants, so Framingham, uh, the Framingham study, the Framingham offspring study is an epidemiological study, and they looked at 2,885 patients, uh, all of whom had exercise tests, and they then went and started trying to work out how many of them actually developed ectopics during the exercise. Okay, these were asymptomatic patients. So these patients did not have any symptoms. They, they simply had exercise testing as a part and parcel of the study that they were participating in. And these guys then looked back and said, how many of these guys actually get ectopics when they exercise? And you know, it was 27% of them had some form of ectopy. Okay, so having ectopics on exercise is not uncommon. Uh, a quarter of asymptomatic people can have it. Then they said, well, how many people get a lot of ectopy? And a lot of ectopy is defined by having more than 10% of all beats during the exercise test as ectopic beats. Okay, and in young people, that is vanishingly low. And in fact, only I think four people out of the 2,885 people they studied had more than 10% of their beats uh, were ectopics. Now, if you look at a slightly older population, there was another study that was published in uh, the Journal of American College of Cardiology by a guy called uh, Flegg, J.L. Flegg, and this was published in 1989. And they took a slightly older population, and um, this population was between 21 to 96 years, and they found that almost 10, almost 7 percent, 7 percent developed frequent ectopy, which is defined as greater than 10 percent of all beats being ectopic beats. Okay, and the people who get these are generally older; they're generally men, and they're generally people who have high blood pressure. And therefore, they're generally, by definition, more by they're generally by inference more likely to have coronary artery disease because they're older and they have high blood pressure. But uh, in young people, it is very uncommon to get a lot of ectopy, but it is common to get some ectopy. Okay. So that should be a bit of reassurance that you're not alone and it isn't all that bad if you get some ectopics on exercise. But if you get a lot of ectopics, a lot of ectopics on exercise, uh, then that probably warrants a bit more investigation. Um, so there was an uh, interesting paper um, where they looked at evaluation of cardiac arrhythmias amongst athletes and um, 
basically um, this was done by a guy called Hugh Calkins and Nazarian and basically ventricular tachycardia um, which is unassociated with structural heart disease. So what I'm basically trying to say is that if you get ectopics on exercise, it's worth getting checked them out. It's getting, it's worth getting them checked out. It's worth having an echocardiogram and a stress test and a halter. And it's worth knowing how many ectopics you get when you exercise. Now, if you're getting infrequent ectopics, you know, some people get 10, 15 ectopics, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. If you're getting more frequent ectopics, it is worth knowing whether you have underlying structural heart disease or not. And in particular, the echo is useful because it will tell you if you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which can be serious, and if you have arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, although sometimes you need an MRI scan to look for that. But otherwise, if you have a structurally normal heart, a ventricular tachycardia does sometimes occur, but there is little associated risk of sudden death from it, okay? If it does occur, it's most likely due to be right ventricular outflow tract tachycardia. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just trying to find it. A right ventricular outflow tract tachycardia. Uh, and um, this is because exercise, for some reason, increases the cycling AMP levels, which leads to an increase in intracellular calcium, and that causes the tachycardia. And it's important when you find that particular tachycardia, a right ventricular outflow tract tachycardia, to make sure that the patient doesn't have something called arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, which is, uh, which is structural heart disease. Um, and this particular tachycardia is very amenable to ablation. So even, even if you get ventricular tachycardia uh, on exercise, in the absence of structural heart disease, it is unlikely to cause you to drop down dead. Uh, if you do have structural heart disease, um, sorry, if you, if you do get ventricular tachycardia in the absence of structural heart disease, it is important uh, to get that defined. And usually it's right ventricular outflow tract tachycardia, which is amenable to ablation and can be cured. Okay. Um, and that's really about it. I mean, if, if the other thing to say is that if you are getting uh, a lot of ectopics on exercise, you're not found to have structural heart disease. You don't have any family history of sudden cardiac death. You're not blacking out with your ectopics. And you, your arrhythmia or your ectopics are not significantly worsening with exercise. Then most people wouldn't even stop you from exercising. So I hope this provides you with a little bit of reassurance that, you know, the, the, that the, um, that ectopics that come on on exercise are not uh, always a marker of something bad. Uh, they are common. Uh, and it's only when you get very, very frequent ectopics, um, which cause you to be unwell in some way, which cause you to, you know, collapse, or, uh, and particularly if you're found to have structural heart disease, well, then they're important. Otherwise, all you need to do is if you get them, get checked out, make sure you don't have structural heart disease. And once you, um, once that's been excluded, get on with your life, get on with your exercise, and don't worry about it. All right. So I hope this helps. Um, now, I just wanted to tell you that uh, you can contact me on uh, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. Uh, you can ring my secretary on that number um, if you wanted to um, have a virtual consultation or a consultation by phone. I'm also available on Twitter and I'm also available on Facebook. So um, I wish you all the best and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.